see it. So I have been laughing to myself a lot lately over an old expression that I do believe needs to be changed. But uh, before I talk about what I think it should be changed to, I just like to say that uh, the love that dare not speak its name isn't a phrase that you really hear anymore. I think that once homosexuality became like mainstream, it just slowly faded away. But it's one of those things like clutch my pearls. It just makes me laugh any time that I think about it because I never hear it but all I have to do is think about it because it's never like just a couple of normal people whenever I think of the expression the love that dare not like speak its name it's always some like old foreign detective who's investigating something excuse me I am investigating a murder and I was hoping that uh, I might ask your whereabouts Two evenings ago, between the hours of five and nine. Yes, take your time. Think about it. Your eyes, uh, they are quite puffy, no? Were you having any uh, women problems that you were crying about? No. No, I see uh, the cuff of your corduroy jeans. It's quite high. Women problems, that is not your thing, no. No, I sense it's something else, right? Could it be the love that dare not speak its name? Shh, shh. Boris knows. I, I think we can go ahead and save the love that dare not speak its name for pedophiles who need to stay silent on that. It's been a long time since I thought about the nightmare that it was like getting a driver's license when I was in high school. So I thought I would just reflect down memory road for a bit. And I know I screwed that whole phrase up. Um, okay, so how many times have I taken a driving test? Actually, it's more than the number that I was originally going for. But when I was a child, I uh, took a driving test three times. So the first time... I thought that driving was going to be like pretty common sense. I had been in cars my whole life and I was like, I think I got it. You stop on reds, don't speed. So I remember them like prepping us for the driver's test in driver's ed. And I was just like, dude, I've got this. My mother, who is or at least was a nag. She would be like, are you studying for your driver's test? And I'd be like, mm-hmm, knowing damn well I hadn't looked through that book at all. And of course, as life would have us taught, when you don't study for something, especially if it's not like, oh, you can read that book by its cover, you're screwed. So I think it was a Saturday. My mom takes me to the DMV so I can take my driving test, the written test. That's important. The, the physically driving a car test, not an issue for me. One and done. But that written test. So I get there and I'm 16. Um, there are a bunch of other like kids with me because, hey, everybody's about to get their fucking driving on. And I can't remember if I actually knew anybody that was at the DMV, but it was clearly like every high schooler had their parents up early as fuck in the morning. Like, let's go do this. So I start taking this test. And right away, I want to say by question three, if not question two, right away, I understand. I should have studied because I was like, holy shit, they're coming out of the like left field with these questions. Like how far from this point should you start breaking if you're going this fast? And I was like, oh, don't do this. Don't do this. So I am panicked and I am guessing and I'm looking around. I, I feel like I look like a cheater and I don't know if my mother could see me because I feel like they put us in the back of the DMV. If she could, I could only imagine the disappointment like all the other kids confidently answering and then you see your child breaking a sweat looking around like they have to take a shit. So I failed the test and they stop you when you got well back in the day. It's probably changed by now. They would stop you before like I don't remember how many you could miss. But if they told you if you miss five, 
you're done. On the fifth incorrect answer, your test ends. Everyone else who's answering correctly, and I want to say it was only like 18 questions, but these kids are still taking it. Meanwhile, I just like, oh, oh, I'm done. Okay. And I start stepping away from the thing. They are taking it for a little while. The smartest ones who finished first finished minutes after me. So embarrassed, I have to walk back to my mother and tell her that I failed. Not only did I fail, I have to tell her every time, you know, that you were asking me whether or not I was studying. Yeah, I wasn't. And when I was supposed to for school, I, I still didn't. Why? Why didn't I study? Uh, I mean, there is no good answer, but if you if you just need to hear words, I didn't study because I thought that this whole thing would be like a given. Like, what color do you stop at a stoplight? Red. And what does yellow mean? Yield. I thought it would be those things. What's a solid line? What's a breaking white line? You can pass. The things, you know, that I knew. I don't even think I knew, like, a right and left turn, which I, I don't know to this day, but I don't ride bicycles, and I never had a problem with my turning signal, so I never had to use it. But, so that to say, so this time I study. And for the second test, because they make you wait, like, three weeks I want to say before you can take the next test it might have only been a week but I feel like it was three might have been two so now I study and I go over there I go to a different DMV I don't remember why I don't remember if it was because I was embarrassed to show my face in the other DMV like they would recognize me hey you're that kid who failed but I was like okay let's go let's go uh, to the one that's like 20 minutes further down the road I'll have better luck there we can see a movie or something afterward so I go in there this time I've studied and I get much closer to the end I'm pissed that I'm missing questions but I am getting questions right I want to say out of 18 I want to say I got stopped on like question 17 I got the last one wrong and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So again, Miss Richardson watched me have to come out with my head down the first time because I didn't study. This time, she knows I did study. But I still, in the pamphlet, it's not like a biology textbook. It's a pamphlet. Maybe it was 20 pages. Maybe it was less. And I had to walk back to her. And as I'm walking back, there are people behind the counter. I think that they gave you your like uh, score or your report before. As I'm walking around the counter, and this dude doesn't know how many times I've taken the test. He just goes at the top of his lungs to me, but also to everybody. He goes, Oh, man, you were so close. And I didn't even get to tell my mom because everyone knew. And she's just like, you've got to be kidding me twice. And I don't think she said much because she could probably see that I was really stabbing myself in the face on the inside. Um, but yeah, twice. And it's, it's just one of those things like I know I'm not slow or I don't have a, a learning disability. So it's just really disappointing to fail what should be an easy test twice. Especially when one of those times I gave a whole fuck. And uh, so, yeah, now another three weeks. I hope she didn't tell anybody. I hope she didn't tell her friends like, oh, yeah, he's finally going to get his thing. This time he studied. And then, you know, somebody's got to check back in. Oh, what'd you do today? Oh, you know, we were around. Wait, 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 wait. You, your son, he was going to take that driver's test again, right? God, please tell me he got it. He didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. But at the same time, if you can't pass that test, you probably don't need to be on the road. Like, if I couldn't commit this pamphlet to memory, I, I, I didn't need to be driving. And that's exactly what I did 
for test number three. I memorized every fucking word of the pamphlet, sentences, things that didn't mean anything, like, I don't know, the copyright date of the pamphlet. I knew it all. And I walked out. What sucked was, after having failed twice, I walked in with a mission. There was no joy about getting my driver's license. It was like when bullies are passing something over your head and you finally get it. You're not happy to get it back. You just want the fucking game to be over. And that's all I wanted. I walked in there like the Terminator. Mm, 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 mm. 18 out of 18. Excuse me. As I grab it, there's no celebration, which there shouldn't be. But even if my mother did want to celebrate, I'd have been like, nah, let's just get out of here. This is embarrassing. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think she wanted to go get a pizza or anything. It's just like, hey, it's you. It's about fucking time. Let's hit the road. I have a story for you. Long time ago, there was a young man. He was in middle school. And he was celebrating his birthday. So, in his art class, there were a couple of young men who fancied themselves bullies. And they decided that they would give him birthday licks. But, these weren't just any kind of birthday taps. They were punching as hard as they possibly could in his arm and in his chest in the middle of the classroom. The teacher couldn't help but hear the punches. They could be heard throughout the entire room. And she pulled the young man who had been hit outside and told him, those boys aren't your friends. I don't know if you know that, but they need to be reported for what they did. The young boy looked back at her and didn't have to think about it He knew there was no way he was going to tell on those boys. Plus, even though it sounded like they were punching him hard, they hadn't hurt him. So he told the teacher, No, I don't want to tell on them. I don't think that you understand what that implies. She said that she did, and wrote them up and sent them to the principal's office anyway. They got suspended for two weeks. Rumors began to swirl about how he had told on the boys. The teacher had really removed herself from the situation. So why would she be concerned about a bunch of young students talking about a snitch? The boy had to deal with it when the two boys came back and they were both very aggressive under the impression that he was responsible for their suspensions. He told one of the boys, he told both of them, he had no part of that. He even told them that they hadn't heard him. The two boys didn't believe him. Long time passed with them throwing him cold stares. After about a year, one of the boys came to him and told him, you know what, I don't think you did tell. Doesn't really seem like who you are. And he said, I didn't. I appreciate that you finally believe that. Over time, the other boy would grow to believe the same. And over time, the birthday boy who had been picked on was much bigger than the other two. About five years after the whole birthday licks incident, one of the boys appeared in a local newspaper. The birthday boy looked down recognized the face. The young man who had been suspended and who was last to believe that he hadn't actually snitched had just been arrested along with another friend. It appears that during a a robbery in the local area, they decided to put two young men on their knees and execute them. He thought about that and he thought about the little boy who had been suspended he was glad that he hadn't actually snitched on them. I guess the moral of this story is, don't snitch. You never know. They could be a killer. Welcome back to Closed Mouths Don't Get Fed Episcopal Church. We're still doing our services through the internet as we do not know when everyone will be vaccinated and it's important 
let's begin by looking at uh, one of my favorite pieces of scripture. Ephesians 5.22 clearly states, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Ephesians 5.23 then comes in to say, for the husband is the head of the wife, as is Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. All right, now let, let's just go back and talk about what, what you just heard there. All right. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Now, I think that we can all agree we all submit to the Lord, do we not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever the Lord asks you, that's what you'll do. Lord tells you, go kill one of your sons for him. Whew. I guess you're going to pick a son, huh? So if your husband tells you, you know, uh, you won't be wearing that dress out to a social gathering amongst my friends and colleagues, well, I think that you might need to put on something a little classier. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? What the Lord is telling you is when you pick a husband, you're basically picking your own personal Lord and Savior. Ooh. Yeah, I bet you hadn't thought about it like that. That man is your Jesus. And what did you do? What did you do last night when he tried to get a little bit? Hmm. <laughs> Did you make a noise and roll over? Did you smack his hand when he pinched you on the ass? Huh? Well, you smacked Jesus' hand. That's what you did. <sighs> Hallelujah. Now, let's talk about Ephesians 5.23. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. Oh, that's powerful stuff. You see, the wife has no head. Not once she got married. Once she walked down that aisle and her father gave her away, she was headless. You heard about Sleepy Hollow, Ichabod Crane, and the Headless Horseman? Well, that horseman was a bride who just got hitched. Where's her head? I don't know. I didn't like that Christopher Walken version much. What I'm trying to say is you don't need to worry yourself with reading and thinking. Once you get married, okay, we'll do that. But the body, that's you. That means if the, the drains have to be uh, drained, I don't do that myself. We've got a little help. By the way, pass around that collection plate. Uh, anything that needs getting done, that's you. And if it comes down to thought, that's me depending like men it's okay to say what you don't know some of you can't do math worth a damn you should see this collection plate some weeks crazy but if you think you've got it you've got it your wife should have the kind of faith in you that she would close her eyes and drive full speed down the road with you telling her what to do because she knows that you wouldn't lead her wrong am i right ladies I have always thought, one, chivalry is dead. Uh, women say it. You're, you're very right. Um, cause I'll be honest, like I don't mind holding a door open, but that's about all that I ever want to do. I believe that I have touched on how I don't ever want to give up my seat. Ever. Unless I honestly think you can't stand. Like, you cannot. You're about to die. Not collapse. Die. Then... Yes, I want you to have my seat rather than dying. But if it's not that, like if it's just putting your comfort ahead of my own, I mean, if you're not my wife, no, just no. But there was always one uh, funny thing that I remember about this whole chivalry thing. Now, some women want, you know, their gas pumped. And that's actually cool. I've been in relationships before when... I wanted to pump her gas. Like, yeah, I got it. 
Uh, again, holding the door, really not a big deal for me. Same goes for elevators. Pulling out a chair before you sit down feels... That feels like a bit much. Like, we're not back in the fucking 1500s or something. And I always think back on the couple that comes across a puddle. And then a guy takes his coat off and puts it on the puddle so that the woman can then step on it so that she doesn't get wet. I don't understand that. And I'm glad I've never seen it done in this day and age. Imagine if you saw somebody take their fucking coat off and put it over a puddle. And then the lady that they were with stepped on the coat, ruining it. I would be like, why couldn't you step around that puddle? Like, not only is he a fool for taking his coat off, but what kind of a jerk? That's like if you're with somebody and they're like, oh, uh, you know, I'd do anything for you. I would cut off one of my fingers if I thought you needed it. And then the other person just goes, do that. Give me your right pinky. And you wouldn't expect a the person to take you up on it like, oh, we're giving fingers away. But B, then you wouldn't expect the person to actually do it. This is how I imagine that to go. What the hell do you mean you're leaving? I'm not a gentleman. Like Chester? Is this about when we saw him put his thing in the puddle a couple weeks? All right. I don't know if you know this because Chester's a guy and he only explains this to men. Chester inherited a thousand coats from a very eccentric rich uncle when he was a kid. He couldn't even fit him until a couple of years ago. The man has a home filled with coats. It's nothing to Chester to just put a coat in a puddle. You know what he does with those coats after he goes on these dates? He throws them into the forest. And sometimes if you come across one that doesn't have a whole bunch of mud and feces and food in it or a dead animal living in it, you can clean it off and try to wear it, but people know the Chester coats. They're like, oh, I see the streak of mud in the back. That's a Chester coat, right? Don't let him fool you like he fools all of these women, okay? He's been fooling them, getting in their petticoats because they think he's only got like two or three coats. This man has a thousand coats. You know how many coats I have, Lorraine? I have two. So, what is the, uh, the creepiest thing you've ever done? Good question. I guess I would have to um, pick between two different events. So, stay with me. You tell me which you think is creepier. Um, the first one starts, I was high school, I believe. And uh, I had this next door neighbor and he and I would hang out a lot because like we were literally right next door. So I hung out with his sisters too. They were like a year younger than us. Um, and I remember this one day, never found his sisters particularly attractive and they were twins. So one day I wasn't hanging out. But everybody else who was hanging out had the same story to tell about one of his sisters. I don't remember all the details of it, but I do remember at some point she started blowing uh, this one dude in, in the neighborhood who hung out with everybody. And while she was blowing that guy, uh, another guy from the neighborhood started having sex with her and there were people there just watching aside from the whole connective three-way love thing that was going on with those three when they told me that i don't know how most people react to hearing something like that but when they told me that i thought oh that's nasty but not like in a bad way. Like I was very turned on 
by this sexual freakitude that his sister had shown. And I was a virgin. I was a virgin all through high school. And desperately trying to lose mine. I was not a virgin by choice. So I got all these hormones worked up. You know, think American Pie. And hearing that, oh man. Now, the weird thing is like, I guess it's not weird. Because I would never try to date someone after hearing news like that. I mean, that's somewhat true. I did date one person when I was younger off of something similar to that. And that was a mistake. So shame on me. But yeah, I wasn't like going to go approach one like, hey, we should go on a date. Instead, every time that I would see them, like I'm coming home from hanging out with my friends you know, or school or something, and they're like hanging out out front. And so instead of saying anything, I would just go home and masturbate. Like every time that I saw her uh, until I was no longer in high school, basically. So that's, that's one. Or, um, so I'm in uh, school down in Richmond and I'm driving and uh, I've got my, my dorm mate in the car with me and this old man like jumps into my lane and hits me. It's the first time I'd ever been in an accident. My, my dorm mate was angry as shit and was getting ready to kick that dude's ass. So the guy just gives us the insurance information. Car has to get taken care of. Uh, they give me a rental car. Now, coinciding with this, I am in a relationship. And as a matter of fact, it's uh, the one that I brought up. Like, I shouldn't have entered the relationship because the whole thing began with my coworker at a laser tag place telling me that this woman gives great head and I heard that news and I was like oh that's nasty and I was very turned on because she was a gorgeous girl and I was like I've got to know what that's all about give me a ticket to that show but in hindsight like don't do that I would, I would tell my you know child don't do that um, so I've got a rental car and there are several clues that I am being cheated on. So, what do I do? Acting as though I knew I was going to have this rental car, and I only had it for like three or four days, I think. Uh, what I did was, my friend and I went, and uh, incognito is what we called it, because I put on a hat. And I put on shades, and I put on a wig, and so you couldn't really tell it was me, but I also didn't look like a real person. I looked like those guys in a trench coat and the hat with the glasses going into, like, a nasty video store. You don't know who it is, but you know whoever it is is suspicious and doesn't want to be identified. Until you see their car in the parking lot and you're like, I saw your Hyundai outside the MVC. Anyway, so we're sitting in a parking lot where I know her car is. Just waiting. We waited there for, I want to say hours. It was definitely like an hour. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe an hour and some change. Which is still a long time. Looking back. I don't think back on it often, but looking back, I'm like, Jesus Christ, you should have just dumped her. But I waited there. And what's saddest is I didn't really get any proof that I needed. Like, I didn't see anything. So I went through all that, came up with nothing, and I was just a creep. There was no pluses to that. No aha moment where I jump out of a bush like, I knew you were sucking this guy's dick. No, it was just a day where I felt like a lot less of a person for a moment because I was like, well, you did that. No taking it back now. But, uh, you know, good news is I don't really think about it. So um, which would you pick of the two? Ooh, I'm going to go with masturbating to your neighbor repeatedly until you were done with high school. Yeah, and that takes the cake.